My first race would have been on the motorcycle I won, the RM50, and it was at a club in Brisbane called Trailblazers. Um, it was something I, I, I just, I loved it. You know, even from the first day I rode that motorbike and I didn't know how to ride, I just enjoyed it. Um, and I guess it, it just become an, a, a passion. My name's Daryl Vitti. My career has been motorcycles and currently I run a tour company called Daryl Vitti Adventures. For me, I was nine years old and at that time we were living south of Brisbane in a suburb called Acacia Ridge. And I was getting ready to go to school this day. So that was in 1979. And Agro Cartoon Connection show was on TV in the mornings. And it came on a uh, mini bike prize to win RM50 Suzuki, guess the weight. And I said to mum, oh, can I ring the motorbike shop at Ipswich? So I got, picked the phone up, rang them, and the guy said, hang on a minute, come back. And he says, that motorcycle weighs 56 kilos. And I took off to school and mum filled out all these envelopes, I think about 10 of them at the time. Didn't think any more of it. And a month later, I got a letter in the mail from Channel 7 saying you'd won the motorcycle, it had been drawn on the weekend at a uh, big round of the motocross championships in Ipswich. And uh, I went on TV and picked it up. And from then on, I rode in the bush, raced mini bikes, and went through the ranks and went from winning a motorcycle to turning it into a career. Running away now from Arba ever so slightly and Davidi all over the back of Catalora. Believe they're coming in now on Arbe. Look at Daryl Beatty hounding and just getting up behind him and giving him a hard time. The 19 year old got Beatty all over the back of him. He's reborn this year on the Suzuki. Looks terrific. Very fast through qualifying. This is the crowd. Crowd go berserk, Australia one and two. That's the quest for championship number two, Daryl Beatty. The other Australian comes over. He gets equally as big a cheer as he flashes across the line in second place. Back-to-back -back world champion Michael Doohan was again going to be the man to catch in 1996. But who would be good enough? Fellow Aussie Daryl Beatty was shaping as the main contender. But the 1995 runner-up suffered an early setback. Yeah, it was, in, uh, it was in France. It was in a circuit called Le Mans. It was the first practice on Friday morning. And I went out and I was about half to three quarters of the way through the lap. And I turned into a corner and the bike broke away in the rear. And it flicked me up in the air. And when I come down and landed on the bike, uh, my foot went into the bottom of the sprocket and around the sprocket and it chopped the end of the boot off and all my toes. There had been a mistake by uh, someone in the garage that hadn't had the tyre warmers on before I'd went out, so I was on a cold tyre. Um, but yeah, it was, um, I guess the pain at first was quite severe, it was like a burn. And um, yeah, from then on it was really about once the crash had happened and they got me stable, and airlifted me to Paris and I had surgery. I had complications with my foot for quite a few years and had surgery in America, still had issues. Eventually came back to Australia and Brisbane and Wickham Terrace there were all our, I guess our elite um, uh, surgeons are. And a guy called Dr. Andrew Jenkins um, took an artery and a flap out of my arm and put it in my foot and um, fixed it. And the lead up to those crashes in 96 was, I'd had such a great year in 95, finishing second in the World Championship. 96 was looking really promising. Um, our lap times were strong, our long race distances were strong. Uh, and then we were having some engine issues and some seizures with, with the pistons in the cylinder. And I had a couple of crashes in that test and then one big crash in that test where I banged my head and finished up in hospital. I tried to go back racing, just felt awkward, didn't feel right, uh, struggled to find the speed. And then in, I came back to Australia and had more tests done and they'd realised with the impact and the fracture I'd had, um, it also damaged my middle ears. So I had to have surgery to have that fixed. And throughout that period, I decided I'd had enough of racing. By the time I finished in 97, I was 27. Um, 
had a career in this sort of racing generally as mid thirties. Um, yeah, so I left early. I was very fortunate that I had a good friend that I grew up with from school, from kindy. He had a good role in Australia doing commentary in Australia for motorsports in Australia. And because we were close friends, a year or so after I finished and I was struggling to think what's next with my life, Lee put my name forward at Channel 10 at the time to say, um, Daryl was really good working at Channel 10 on Grand Prix motorcycle racing because this is what he's done, he's just stopped. And I never left. And I've been at Channel 10 since the late 90s. Um, what are we now, 20, uh, 2021? And this will be my last year at Channel 10 this year. At the time, um, even though I started at 10 doing motorbikes, my role grew at 10 over the years. I was working across many different motorsports, not just motorcycles, which was, which was so great. We had such a great team of people. And some of that after, you know, seven, eight years was starting to dwindle. And that's what made me start the adventure tours. And I used that time until I got that notice at Channel 10 to do my homework, build it up, buy a truck, go and map out some routes, start a website, you know, start a new biz little small business. And by the time they came and said, your only role at Channel 10 is now is motorcycles, boom, there was Daryl Beatty Adventures and it started. I'm fortunate, you know, I just think if I'd never won that motorcycle on TV show, if I'd never won certain races that gave me the in to the next best team, to the next, you know, Honda signing me and going to Europe. Um, there's a lot of processes for that to happen and it happened for me. Um, I got, got great wife, got great kids, got great family. Um, you know, I, I get to go away and for seasonal times on motorbike trips, I don't know, mate, it's just, I, f I feel lucky, you know, and at times we can dwell on things and feel down and we do and I do but 99% of the time I think we're doing pretty good.